you're wrapping up, I'll give you five. Just check that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But don't move your eyes. Just when you're talking, always just look direct. Directly to you. Mm -hmm. okay. Don't move them back and forth. And welcome to today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm your host, Michelle Graves, nationally and internationally known as the Money Lady. 36 years of handling all types of currency, money, insurance, investments, taxes, real estate, you name it. I have certainly done it. And it is a great honor and privilege today for me to have as the guest on my show the entire hour my accountant who does my tax work and she's a sharp lady sharp so I am honored that she has uh, allowed me to interview her so that we can talk about taxes because it is that time of the year can you believe 2012 zipped like a jet whoa and Congress is talking about tax reform and we're dealing with this financial crisis and all of these things, uh, Medicare. There's a lot going on out here. So I wanted to bring you the best because that's just how I do it. You know, as the kids say, this is how we do it. Well, this is how I do it. When it comes to the world of money, you must have competent and uh, knowledgeable individuals as a part of your team Business owners, listen to me well, but also individual consumers. We all are going to have to deal with the tax system. That's just how America works. It goes back to Rome. Somebody's got to pay their bills, and it's going to be through tax revenue. So I'm delighted to introduce as my guest today, Robin Lewis, who is CEO of ComproTax Cincinnati, and she will be talking to me for the next hour about tax reform, what you need to do now to prepare, and what is a good tax preparer. A lot of people say CPAs, a lot of people say tax attorneys, a lot of people say tax preparers. I work with all of the above, but fundamentally, and hear me well viewers, you need to have a good tax preparer. And I'm not talking about those little street corner operations and all the little things that talk, I don't want to get into that. You really need to know somebody that knows what they're talking about. So I'm going to introduce you to my guest. Sit down, take notes. Uh, if you have questions, you can always uh, give me a call or give her a call or become a client. I mean, I don't care. I'm not uh, selfish when it comes to excellence. So how are you today? Oh, I'm Good wonderful. to see you. Thank you so much Guys, for having me. Yes. <laughs> I was so delighted to have you. Yes. Well, where do we want to begin? Let's talk about you and your background because okay. we've been doing business for a decade. Can you believe that? Yes, two years. Gosh, my gosh, fast. it yes. has gone by like a rocket, but you have been so excellent in my world. But let's talk about you and your background. Okay. Um, first, I'll start out talking about the company that I'm with, ComproTax. We're a national company um, celebrating 30 years in business this 30 year. 30 years. 30 years. My um, goodness. We're based out of Beaumont, Texas, and we have um, office locations nationally. And um, I started with them about 10 years ago, and uh, we're an education-based company. Um, it's important to us that we make sure that we're providing a service where we help people, not just um, use the predator mode. So uh, we... Tell me about that predator mode. What are you speaking of? Well, there's a lot of people out here, and some of them are credentialed, I hate to say, as CPAs. Not all of them, but there are a few, and there are a lot of what we'll call three-month tax services that come in, basically don't know anything about taxes. Um, their goal is to pull money out of the community, provide a very poor service, and then disappear by the time you might get a letter from IRS. So mm. um, we're a year-round company. So you're open all year? Mm -hmm. We're open, open all year, all year. yes. And um, we uh, have a training class that we require anyone within the company takes. It's an 18-week tax course. We study tax law um, in addition to some other training that we do. And so it kind of keeps us on top of things. And 
allows us to expand our knowledge and help a greater amount of people. So we try to try to grow and get a new topic every year. Well, I was one of your students. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and that's when I decided I'm going to stay in insurance and investments <laughs> because tax work mm. is nobody's plaything. That's correct. But I'm glad I suffered through. You said I was a good student. Yes, you were a wonderful student. Um, yes. But it was a challenge to me because most people have no idea mm -hmm. how complex mm -hmm. and how complicated tax law is. Mm -hmm. And of course, in my private practice, the things that you taught me enabled me to look at uh, the tax um, records as a part of my review process. And I must tell you, there's a lot of people that are getting very bad, bad oh, yes. tax work. Yes. I mean, people that should be getting better for their income. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the mistakes, the errors, the la I, I, it was just incredulous. Mm -hmm. Absolutely it really incredulous. Is. And it's, it's a matter of not caring about people, too. That's One of it is a lack of knowledge. But if you care about people, you're going to give them the best that you have. And so that's kind of something that we... Um, focus on at Comfortex is, is giving the care. We try to get the knowledge and the good quality product, but we also care about people, so we actually love them, and so we want to make sure that we give them what they need, and if they need more, we're available to serve them. So that's kind of the difference um, that makes Comprotex stand out from some of the other um, three-month companies that exist. Well, when you made the decision to become a part of that national organization and work in the Cincinnati Dayton market, what made you, when you looked, I mean, clearly you're a very credentialed woman, you work with municipalities, you know how this works. Mm -hmm. So what made you choose this company? Well, I liked it because um, while we are a tax company, uh, we're in the business of entrepreneurship. And I see that as a very important factor in life today specifically in our community, but in all communities. And so while we use taxes as our vehicle, our purpose is to uh, develop entrepreneurs, uh, people who not necessarily may stay in the tax industry, but who learn the fundamentals of entrepreneurship uh, through their involvement with Compro Tax, and that possibly that they may go out and, you know, go get into another business, but understanding the fundamentals, they understand the tax side, the financial needs, and so I really like the fact that we were looking to provide something for maybe our youth, generations to come. We're building something that, like an olive tree, will be around in 100 years. And That's still powerful. Be young, people, mm -hmm. young people are critical. Yes, they are. They to are. To the prosperity of a nation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as we yes. look at so many young people today who cannot find employment, right. the entrepreneurial route may be the answer mm -hmm. for many of them. So how do you all do that? Well, basically, we bring people in um, any type of knowledge level. It doesn't matter what you know or what you don't know, where you've been and where you haven't been, as long as you can make a commitment to study. So we bring people in. We have a system called Provisional Time to Grow, which is really a uniquely different system from a franchise where you're looking at paying anywhere from 45000 to 150000 for a franchise. Mm -hmm. uh, the cost of our class is uh, minimal, very minimal. Mm -hmm. um, we have two opportunities. We have the in-office and we have a mobile tax um, opportunity that's really been wonderful for people who really want to be entrepreneurs and they're involved in maybe two or three different things. Mm -hmm. And so the mobile tax allows them to, you know, tap in on that product too. So we bring people in. Um, they complete the class, we actually test them and everything, and then uh, we give them two years to grow, build a clientele, build up their knowledge, and then we expect them to go out and open an office and do the same thing for others. So um, over the 30 years, it has been duplicated, um, and the system has actually made seven millionaires so far. The Compro Tax system has made seven millionaires yes. following this entrepreneurial model? Yes, yes. I'm following. impressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a wonderful model. Um, one of the founders has educated as high as the ninth grade, and that was it. Everything he knows, he's taught himself. Um, our founders are some of the brightest tax minds in America, and so we all strive as part of the organization to become some of the brightest tax minds in America also ourselves. So we work really hard, we study hard, and it, and it pays off in a good way in terms of serving the community.
I think you're right, and particularly as we are, um, we're at kind of a meeting of the roads um, in our country as we look at what is happening in so many areas, but most importantly is the issue of government revenues and the fact that the government is struggling. Um, actually, its solvency is, is, is in question because without the productive capacity of a people mm -hmm. through jobs, right. the government winds up having to borrow money to meet the uh, deficit. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about, on the subject of government, um, what is the role of the Internal Revenue Service? Well, their role is to uh, collect revenue for the um, for the country and enforce tax law um, and they have not really managed the industry really well up until recently. Okay. There's been a lot of fraud, um, you know, it's such a broad area, there's so many different levels of taxpayers and different types of taxes and as you learned in my class, the tax laws are, are not written fairly. Yeah, and they're fluid. Um, yes, yes. I mean, really and fluid. And so understanding <laughs> that, you know, you can educate a person, can educate themselves as how to get the best benefit out of a tax law. But the Internal Revenue Service has finally stepped up, and I'm really glad of this, maybe about three years ago, and decided to um, police the tax preparation industry. So they have required that everyone register, which is a good thing, because there were people that would show up January the 1st, put a sign up, and not read one textbook, mm. buy some software, and just predator. And so now there is a requirement that we uh, pass the IRS test, and I will say that we at ComproTax have already done so, even oh, though that is wonderful. the deadline to pass the test is not till December of 2013. Mm -hmm. um, also, we have uh, the registration, like I said, every year mm -hmm. we must register, and also the continuing ed piece. Okay. And so it does, um, and that's for anyone who is paid for, uh, mm -hmm. is in the market of doing taxes for pay. Okay. And so that is anyone who's not credentialed as a CPA, enrolled agent, or an attorney. They have their own credentialing, which is good in a sense, and um, there are good and bad in every category. Um, I've seen some CPA work that I've cried about. Robin, I've seen <laughs> some CPA work that I've cried about, mm -hmm, including mm -hmm. some of my own CPAs. Yes. Which yes. is, are you serious? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You want me to pay you now? Right, right. Are you serious? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So that's a big mm -hmm. part of um, one of the things that we do is, and we're open year round, and of course we do training. We also do bookkeeping. Oh, we, you do bookkeeping yes, for we small bookkeeping. business owners. Mm -hmm. that's and we good. have to work very hard to get business owners to understand, you know, being in business now is a very popular thing. Everybody wants to be a corporation, and I want to be this and that, mm -hmm. but we don't understand that if you are going to do that, you need to have tight records. Um, if you're a corporation, you have to keep books. You have to have meetings, you have to have, so just educating people on, oh, it sounds good to be an LLC. Yeah, it sounds good, but understand what that means. Right. And so that's part of our, I just did a workshop last week on business structures and their did tax you? consequences. Okay. Um, I did it for a specific group of, of business owners, but I noticed that they tell me they're one thing, and then when it affects their other return, you know, they, oh my, I didn't know. So when you pick a business structure, you've got to understand the implications, whether it feeds to your personal return or mm -hmm. whether it doesn't. And just, I see such a strong need in the community for that, that uh, I'll probably be doing that workshop on a regular basis. Well, I'm just thinking because I'm planning ahead for January, February, and certainly we've done workshops in the past and you've always been well received, always. But I, I would have to agree with you because there seems to be a real push now for people, and a lot of it has to do with the, the people can't get jobs. Mm -hmm. So yes. they figure, because I can't get a job, now I'm going to do me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my God, mm -hmm. yes. after 36 years of doing me, <laughs> let me tell you about what that looks mm -hmm. like. That's correct. And they contact LegalZoom to get an yes. LLC, and yes. I'm like, Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now what does an LLC mean for you? Right, right. Okay, right, I mean, there are right. reasons that mm -hmm. whole corporate structure mm -hmm. evolved. And then one guy said, well, I'm just going to be a straight corporation. And I said, well, 
corporate has its own rules. That's right. And That's double right. taxation mm -hmm. is a part. I mm -hmm. said, who is your accountant? Who does your, oh, I don't have one. Well, that is first. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. You need to get that done mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Yes. And be willing to pay for someone to do a, an assessment of your business idea mm -hmm. and help you with setting up your record keeping and books and because it, it, it is an awesome, mm -hmm. awesome thing. Yes. Good yeah. and bad. Yes, good and bad. Good, good and, and bad. bad. And you have to figure out whether you want this type of situation to affect your personal return. Do you want the two to be separate? Those mm -hmm. are decisions you make up front, not once you're two years in and you decide to file a tax return. So you have to make those decisions to see what's best for you, what's mm -hmm. best for your family, what's best for your personal return, if it comes into play at all. So. Those are decisions that people need to learn to make ahead of time. And I might um, also add, the issue of the hobby loss, at some point, yes. you do have to make money. Yes, you do. It's, after, not, it's, not, mm -hmm. it's not a hobby. No, it's not a hobby. You're, if you're truly in business, you should be in business to make money. Right. That's the point of it. So those individuals who think it's cute to, uh, five years later, still showing losses, um, the government will come in and say, excuse me, this is a hobby. You can only write off your losses to the amount of your income. Exactly. And that ends that. So a lot of people don't understand that, and um, that makes a big difference. Yeah, that hobby loss is, is very important because I had a, an individual that I was looking at uh, uh, the tax return, and um, I said to them, you, you do know you cannot continue doing this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were like, well, why not? I said, because the government is, is, a, is a revenue mm -hmm. uh, right. uh, a mm -hmm. collection agency. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. they need you to play ball right. or get right. out of the game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was like a light bulb went on, like, bing, mm -hmm. are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. And they won't be kidding either when they send you a letter. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So that's a biggie, too. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the changes on the horizon? Because a lot of scuttlebutt's going around. Yeah, right now there are some things up in the air and some things that are pretty definite. Um, okay. One of them is rates. We need to find out whether they're going to extend the Bush tax cuts. We think they are, I at least for are. a certain yeah. certain group of people. Right. Um, and that would, there are some iffy things in there, like right now the educators, the teachers uh, mm -hmm. credit, mm -hmm. that's set to go away. When um, is that set to go away? Uh, that's gone. It ended really? 2011, so it depends on, just like the alternative minimum tax, you know, it was history. Mm -hmm. um, every year they patch it. And we can only pray, I'll say pray for the sake of everyone, mm -hmm. that they patch it again so that it doesn't affect um, sort of middle income people, not even middle really, but they think they're high income, but they're not. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. The, the I know, income this whole range thing of, of what, is, yeah, what is high income is right, struggling. Right. Yeah, because right. that one of the things uh, President Obama with the 250000 I thought the number was a little low. I'm thinking that's not really a lot of money. I mean, a lot of people think it people. is. Yes. And so mm -hmm. I thought, um, I always said either a million or half a million mm -hmm. myself would mm -hmm. be in a good, probably easier fight for him. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they calculated on how much revenue they wanted to get from right. that. And that's kind of why maybe they went to the 250000 But I know that number is not going to work. So um, for a lot of people, they'll get back their lower tax rates. Um, this is the one interesting thing, because I know you have a lot of um, people of different income ranges. And so one of the things that uh, I like is that the capital gains rate this year for people with incomes under 70,000, well, a couple under 70, an individual under 35, is zero. So and a it's person zero. who, now you're talking about adjusted income under 70? Mm -hmm. Yeah, taxable. Right. Taxable. After mm -hmm. a, that, mm -hmm. there's no capital gains tax? Yep, up until um, the end of this month. Wow. That's, so that would be on all, act, all activity for 2011, correct? Not going forward into 2012. 2000. Oh, that goes into 2012? Mm -hmm. That goes into 2012. Tw that is okay. the current 2012 Okay, I'm sorry. Thing. Okay. Um, and then... Um, so that might impact on, actually, seniors. Well, seniors... 
Well, some, yeah, yes. Some, yes, some, some yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, because they would yes. tend to mm -hmm. be more actively involved in trading and, and selling, wouldn't you say, in the marketplace? Or would you have some of you younger people? Well, I guess you would have younger people. Yeah, it, it's yeah. more of an income based. Okay. Um, it's people who understand and who have unique types of income. For example, Mitt Romney. Um, oh, Mitt the Romney type of income he had. Very wealthy man. Yes, yeah. and and capital gains are legitimately taxed at a lower rate, which mm -hmm. makes me wonder about IRS because there's an area where you could really increase your income, but instead you tax those at a lower rate. But you know what, I think this gets back into that whole uh, argument about what serves as an incentive to invest. And we know, and, and, and it's never going to get resolved because it's the perpetual argument between democracy, which is we the people, versus capitalism, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is, hey, I run this ship. Right, and, right. And if you uh, recognize that capitalism is the um, is the venue, then capital gains can be a, a, a very powerful tool oh, yes. or an incentive mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for um, those within certain income brackets right. to do well. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because I do feel that um, it would be worthy of wealthy people to look back toward the Dwight High Eisenhower years when the tax rates in America were just mm -hmm. astronomical. Yes, I, uh, I did you re do you know mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't believe uh, what I saw and I'm hearing this talk and here we're fussing 70 now. Seventy percent of yes. your income yes. didn't matter how much money you mm -hmm. made. Or what type or of what money what type of money right, you made. Right, right. Dwight Eisenhower said just write mm -hmm. a check because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we need the money. Right. And right. so I, I, I say maybe people have a memory lapse. Mm -hmm. Although you can Google it, right? And find right. It out we, right. We don't now. want to hear any more about that. We don't want to hear. <laughs> but but I think that the rich should pay. I, I agree. I agree to some extent. I mean, I don't think that we want to discourage, like you said, investments. I don't want to discourage that. Um, we don't want. And right now, what's happening is a lot of people are moving. People with big money. It's doing some serious moving. Started in this moving past about month. actually, truthfully, Robin's money started moving, and I talked about it on my Facebook post. You know, I know you keep up with that stuff, mm -hmm. but I'll have a flash and start typing. Mm -hmm. Yes. But money really started moving uh, long before the elections. Oh yes, yes. Because wealthy people strategically plan their taxes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Plan Correctly. What they're plan what they're going to pay and yes. what they're not going to pay. Mm -hmm. And money's got to move mm -hmm. where money's going to be leveraged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with the stuff over here as crazy as it has been, I just think they're looking for other venues, including gold yes. and uh, yeah. commodities and, um, and silver. Mm -hmm. They're, they're mm -hmm. looking at hard assets to protect their value. Yes. That's and I think that's, that's appropriate mm -hmm. for the, that type of person. Mm -hmm. I think it mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And there's a lot of people trying to um, seeing themselves in the new uh, higher tax rate. Mm -hmm. And so they are relocating money or, you know, some of the advice, your financial are advisor. Are they relocating not, themselves? Not yet. But not um, yet. right now they're just relocating money mm -hmm. to different venues where, or sometimes people are just taking money because right now they can take advantage of a lower tax rate for 2012. That right. will definitely be gone. Okay. Um, it also explained to me, you know, during the election, there's a lot of um, anti Affordable Care Act, I'll call it what it's really <laughs> truly mm -hmm. called. Um, and the reason for that is because there are two pieces that come into effect in 2013 that are going to well, affect. Well, let's talk about that Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare. That's right. Okay, that mm -hmm. everybody was in a mm -hmm. flurry about. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that because. It's, I, I keep hearing, uh, like I said, the scuttlebutt is that seniors are going to take a hit uh, through their Medicare um, uh, benefits. Um, and I just need to know a little bit more about that. What's that about? Okay. Well, seniors are not, um, I'm not exactly blessed in the Obamacare law, but I've already seen, seeing that I work with seniors. Yes. Um, and I, you do work with seniors. I, I work right. with seniors. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, That's what I love about There's you. been a wonderful piece for them, especially in the um, prescription area. Okay. Uh, thanks to Obamacare. And there are wonderful things happening for them. So the fear of Obamacare was basically 
put out here by a group of people who realize that they're the ones who are going to be paying extra Medicare tax come January 1st, 2013. So now what group is this? This group? is, um, there's two pieces. There's a 3.8% tax on Medicare for unearned income over 200,000 if you're single, 250 for a couple. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a 3.8% tax, and I've calculated it. It can turn out to be a pretty lucrative catch for a multimillionaire. So explain how that works. Uh, the 3.8 tax is on unearned income, so it would be dividends, capital gains, mm -hmm. those kind of things. And if you, your income is over the 250, the 3.8, take a $20 million, um, 3.8 of that turned out to be, I want to say 20,000, but I don't have my calculator. Really? Okay, I can't I think. Know. Uh -huh. But if you think about all the people who could be, because uh, 250,000, let's face it, is not a lot of money, um, unearned income that is. And then there's another one, and I want to make sure that I have my numbers okay, right. There's right. a 9% a tax on um, people who have earnings over, 200,000, 250 of earned income. So, so that's what the, that's what that anger was about. That's all that anger was about because that kicks <coughs> in no matter what they do, no matter what deal they make. It has nothing to do with the Bush tax cuts, the fiscal mm -hmm. cliff or any of that other stuff. It was part of the Affordable Care Act and it kicks into place and it's really going to beef up Medicare, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be a good piece. Um, so Medicare's in trouble. Yes, it needs yes, to and it needs, it to, needs to be. To be and up. like you said, people should be willing, but since they're not, I like this piece that's in here. But explain to me all the earlier in the year, all this, Obamacare, oh my goodness, we got to repeal that. And I said, oh, okay, oh, now yeah. I know ouch, why. Ouch, ouch, yes, ouch, yes, ouch, ouch. Yes. So you're looking at a 9% um, tax. Mm -hmm, now, mm -hmm. is that going to be collected at the time that they file their, their tax returns? Now, that's something I believe. How are they going to collect it? Yeah, they're going to, well, that's I'm the sure only way they, they can. I, I'm sure. Yes, <laughs> yes, I'm sure it's going to be um, uh, on the returns. It's funny, um, our software has come out for 2013, mm -hmm. um, and it's been very difficult. Usually by now, you can get a 20 12 tax return from IRS. Mm -hmm. There's so many things up in the air, they're hesitant to print. Our oh. software companies have come out because we need to get going and we need right, to get things right. right. But there's so many blank spots where we just don't know what's going to happen um, with the teacher credit. There's a possibility that the tuition fees deduction, not the credit, but there's a deduction which usually benefits higher income people. Right now that's history. Oh, wow. Um, there's a okay. lot of things that um, are really going to hurt people that aren't there anymore. So that that mm -hmm. may not be there, but it's hard to say. Are they looking say. at mortgage interest? Are they not looking really. at the negative that's all talk. That they're not oh, okay. It's, it's, I was going to say now that 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 gets icky. Yeah, that, that is something icky. that they would have to look at on a long term. If they really want to do it, they need to get a committee and sit down. But between now and this game, they're going to play at the end of the year in their last minute deal. They're not going to touch any of that mm -hmm. right now. Basically, I think they're going to literally settle on who gets the higher tax rates and let it go at that and then determine. I'm pretty sure that the um, tax holiday, the Medicare 6.2, they gave mm -hmm. you a 2%. I'm pretty certain that's gone. I don't think that's going to come back up in conversation. Okay. Um, so that one's gone. I'm trying to think what else. Let me kind of look okay. at there's no, a few things fine. that are. You have a lot to go. Oh, uh, the alternative minimum on. tax. Uh, there's so much stuff that's up in the air right now. It's hard for us to say. Um, but I'm pretty sure what they're going to stay tax. Are we going back to the five million dollar? Uh, they're going back to the one million dollar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what a lot of uh, uh, financial advisors and investments are telling people to go ahead and, you know, take advantage of that five million. Mm -hmm. Now um, that's one of the things we tell people to do too. If you've got money to give away, you can give up to thirteen thousand per person. Right. Um, and and up to December of thirty first. You still got your five million, so if you really got a lot of money, you could give a thousand people mm -hmm, that and still mm -hmm. not exceed your million mm -hmm, thing. Mm -hmm. But um, that is um, something that's probably going to be debated later. It's not going to be debated now. It's just there's so many things that are so complex and affect so many people that right now I think they're just going to determine which one of the Bush tax cuts they're going to keep and what they're going to save. Um, I think they're going to. Um, 
patch the alternative minimum tax. I really do. You really do? I really believe that. Okay. I think that the tax holiday is gone. Another thing that's really important that, that you know, the mortgage forgiveness, are you? Yes. Yes. yes we'll talk about that. Uh, well, that was um, a wonderful thing, really, based on the market where people could, um, if they were bankrupt or, or underwater, underwater yeah. they could um, actually get away with, you know, not having to claim that the mortgage. Mm. Uh, but now, um, well, for example, I, a lot of my clients have rental property. Okay. And the rental property market, along with the housing market, just literally crashed. It did. Um, it a did. couple things happened. Tenants quit paying because mm -hmm. they lost their jobs. The value of their property went higher than, you know, what they owed. And so many people just walked away. Um, so the gain on that, if there was a gain, would have been taxable at an excruciating rate for some people. Um, especially with the way they devalued the property. Right. And so this tax holiday, which has really been in effect, I want to say three or four years, okay. was That's a how way long for them to. Through this mess, yes. Though. Yeah. And, and uh, at least four years, it was a way for them to not claim that gain. Mm -hmm. So if you got a cancellation of debt that related to uh, property, mm -hmm. uh, you were able to fill out a particular form and defer that. Hmm. Um, you still can use that form if you file bankruptcy, but earlier bankruptcy was not a mandatory piece of that. Okay. Um, and that expires um, December 31st of this year, are 2012. We, are, we out of the, no. are we out of the real estate depression? No, I don't think we I'm are. Like, are you kidding me? So I don't know. That's something else they're going to look at. Yeah. You know, all of this stuff is, is bargaining tools. Okay. So, you know, you, you win one place, you lose another. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I think, you know, some of the more important things. But that might be one that, because it costs them money, Yes, it does. Um, it mm -hmm. would be a revenue generator, and it may go. You know, mm -hmm. it's just kind of hard to say, but that's that what. That would be so unfortunate it because be. most people purchased investment property for uh, uh, real estate appreciation as well as cash flow. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I mean, mm -hmm. the benefits mm -hmm. of real estate mm -hmm. in the past yes. were fairly uh, indisputable. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. now, if, if you're talking about them having to pay a tax, Mm -hmm. on that spread mm -hmm. you know th of course market is market but that's still that's painful it could be yes, yeah it could be you know especially now with how the are the banks well i'm just thinking if a if a bank let's play this scenario out okay a person has a four family they bought the four family for 200. okay the market tanked and that value of the property is 100 just for illustration mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so they've got a hundred thousand dollar paper loss, and they're not cash flowing on the property. Right. Well, that's a walk away. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm, that like have mm -hmm, a nice day, mm -hmm, you know. Right. Right. Walk away. Mm -hmm. What would be the consequences on something like that if they walked away next year versus this year? Well, it it would depend on their, uh, you know, how much balance they had left on that mortgage, mm -hmm. and then. Each mortgage company plays their own set of games, and so sooner or later they would decide how much of that debt they would cancel mm -hmm. because, of course, they're going to be able to see that they're not really going to be able to collect that mm -hmm. the rest of that mortgage. So it's the cancellation of debt along with some other factors um, because when you sell um, investment property, you actually have to do a tax transaction. Mm -hmm. uh, it which equals the cost, like you said, two hundred thousand, and th the purchase price, mm -hmm. and then the cost at the day that you walked away from it. Those okay. factors go in, but you also have to add back in any depreciation that you took. Oh, right, right, yeah. So right. that really, generally, in a sale of rental property, that's where the pain comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, add back in, depending if you had your property for say twenty years, you've mm -hmm. got a ton of depreciation to add back in. But also over twenty years, you've made improvements. Sure. Um, and those things are also taken in consideration in the calculation. But what I've noticed with the market in the past few years, people that have walked away because the value of that property deteriorated so low. Mm -hmm. So even though you said two hundred at first, right? Um, even though the value is down to a hundred, a lot of time the bank is giving that property away for fifty thousand. 
Right. And so that on, on individual, auction, yeah. if they do the right thing on their taxes, they actually end up with a pretty nice looking loss that oh, really right. comes out good, you know, <laughs> if they do it properly. But a lot of times people don't understand that they have to report the sale of rental property on their tax return. And so they wait until three years later and the IRS knocks on the door. Um, we understand you had a sale of property uh, and you didn't report it and then they want to act like they don't know anything. Well, isn't that the tax department doesn't tax? At the point that you uh, sell the property and it's recorded, isn't that a document? That's a documented transaction. It is how, a document. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how a person could not report it. Well, they don't know. They don't I mean, know lack of to, knowledge. Okay, yeah, they don't know that, you know, a lot of times you're in a, say you had four pieces of rental property okay. and that was your main source of income. Okay. And all of a sudden, all four of those properties have failed for one reason or another, Got tenants it. don't pay. They, mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, you're without income now. You're trying to regroup into another mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thing. And the last thing you care about is what you owe the government in taxes. Isn't that the truth? You know, and so mm -hmm. that's a lot of times what happens. And then the government is selective about who they send a letter to and who they don't. Well, I, I can tell you right now, I know they're selective, mm -hmm. and they look. They go after small small businesses, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not your corporations. Right. You have a, a bevy of attorneys and mm -hmm, tax specialists. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They don't. They don't go after those boys. They right. go after the little guys and gals who uh, are just trying to keep afloat. Again, and I've said it over the years. Don't swim with the sharks unless you are prepared right. for what dinner is going to look like. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that if you do get into these situations, at least have an accountant like yourself mm -hmm. to look at how their books are set up and are they maximizing those types of um, uh, situations mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to work well for them. Because the tax laws actually were designed to work well for business people. Well, they are. They're written for people in business. That's, that's important. Mm -hmm. Say mm -hmm. that again. Tax laws are written. Written for people in business. They're uh, not written for the average consumer. They are not written for the average consumer or the average worker. Goodness um, gracious. You know, so basically if you're a regular W-2 person, you earn a regular salary, I'd say whatever regular is for each individual. Um, and you then, on top of that, are not a homeowner. There's very few breaks for you. Mm -hmm. And so then we get into this game where we want to play poor, mm -hmm. you know, and so then we want to work only up to a certain point because we understand the earned income credit uh, is going to save us, so we think, um, mm -hmm. which is a terrible theory. So something I wanted to throw in, I did want to tell people, there is a um, something that happens in the community around tax time, and is that people use taxes to fund their Christmas they use taxes to fund their New Year's Eve. And by the time January 1 comes, they've already gotten all the refund that they could possibly get, plus maybe $1,000 in fees. One of the wonderful things that has happened this year is that, that all that early money, Christmas, get yes, your money early, yes. that, that's history. The IRS stopped gone. it. Gone, yes. Good. Actually, really, it actually, I'm glad actually about came that. through banks because that was a banking issue. Yes, it was. There were banks that mm -hmm, did that. So mm -hmm. while the IRS did their part, the banking industry got pressure from them to stop this predatory lending. Because explain how this works. Because frankly, I'm going to be honest with you. I was so offended <laughs> that a person who's quote poor mm -hmm. could get this nice fat check. Mm -hmm for being poor right. and having children, mm -hmm. and I'm writing checks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That just didn't seem mm -hmm. right. Well, it's, um, it's a sad game, but it's one that's played. It's the earned income credit. And a person can have one, two, or three, and actually you can get the earned income credit with no children. You can. As long as you're over 25 and under 65. Okay. But you literally have to make nothing. Nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and so the earned income credit now, believe it or not, goes up to forty-two thousand, maybe forty-five. You can make forty-two thousand mm -hmm, dollars mm -hmm. and get that kind of money back. Well, no, not that kind of. You know, it's a bell-shaped yeah, curve, right. exactly. and so exactly. your mid-range now, I would say, would be about eighteen to mm -hmm. twenty-eight thousand. That's where people are getting the max. Well, that would be your average worker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Average uh, parent, sometimes yeah. two families or one. Right. Okay. Um, with children, and they can um, file a tax return, pay no income tax, and get maybe a 
anywhere between the six to nine thousand dollar refund. This is what I cannot think. <laughs> ah, I cannot, Robin. This really irritates me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because, and I understand the logic as an economist by background, that when you pour money into the um, the poorly paid worker, that money flips faster. Very because, fast. Because they assume, and it's about keeping the economy going. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm, like food mm -hmm, stamps. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to mm -hmm. spend it all yes, quickly. Yes. And they are going to create opportunities in the business mm -hmm. sector. That is true. So it's mm -hmm. called a multiplier effect. But personally, it's very offensive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because I do not think that that is right. And I don't think it's fair either. No, it's not fair. Um, I don't know that it's right, and then we use it in such a bad way. But we'll that's be, what I'm saying. It's not like they they are taking this money it or, and investing yes, it, yes, yes, or, or even saving uh -huh. or putting away money for their children's uh -huh. college. Uh -huh. uh, because or you even want your uh, the next school year, September. Well, you yeah, know? the uh, next, yeah, the next yeah, school year. Yeah, when you get nine thousand dollars in cash, free, free. tax free, yes. which actually. If you look at a return on investment, that's a hundred percent. So the nine thousand really is mm -hmm. eighteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars mm -hmm. that somebody handed you. Right. Well, right. that's not a bad day in the market. No, that's not. That's I mean, not. it is not. Mm -hmm. My my frustration is you can tell they got this money mm -hmm. because they go Christmas shopping, mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. Yes. And shoes and mm -hmm. things that are consumable. Used cars in the yeah, last car. couple months. Yeah. Yes. And I'm going to buy this car. And, and I'm like, what am I missing here? Well, part of it, though, one of the things that I've learned in looking at the young people, this is a young people thing for the most part, yes, even it is. though there it would are. Have to be. Mm -hmm. And it's also a certain mentality. But. Um, there's no education about money. And so we think we, we, it's not that we purposefully do it. No one's taught us anything different. That's one of the things I've learned when I talk to people and I sit down and they get the money and I say, oh, so I guess you're going to put half of this away for school mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a college fund, you mm -hmm. know, explain to them how they could get the 529 tax mm -hmm. write off oh, yes, on their state returns the, yes, and things yes, like that. Yes, and, you know, it, 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 the light bulb goes off because there's a lack of education about money and so people just sometimes don't know. Now there is a good number of people who are gaming out here because I don't know if you've been aware of this but there was a tremendous amount of fraud and identity theft in the last three years with IRS. There is a, um, I want to say CNN did a piece on it, 2020, one of those. There was a gang, they said this was bigger than a drug gang a gang of frauders down in, in uh, I want to say they were in Miami, they were in Florida. Mm -hmm. And what they were doing was paying car dealers and people who took people's information, getting social security, dates of birth and things, mm -hmm. making up income and receiving these refunds on these cards. They had tons of them. They had, some people got trays and slats cards using other people's identity. So it's something we want to warn people. We had several clients whose identity was stolen. Someone oh, else got their refund. Oh, that's miserable. Um, oh, no. And it does sort itself out. Believe you me, you can only, cannot get away with this for long. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a problem that we try to tell people, safeguard your information. Don't run from these places where you have to fill out for a quick this mm -hmm, loan and mm -hmm. quick that loan and get this cheap car and this, that, and the other. Those are the kind of people who are selling the information. But you know what? It only serves the reason. That's why I said, in terms of my relationship with you, my position with all of my advisors, and, and yes, viewers, advisors have advisors. Yes. <laughs> I mean, come on, you can't know everything. You, you know a little bit. But you get what you get. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be engaged in a crazy operation and you're going to give them vitals, your social, your right. family, you're mm -hmm. giving a person that you don't know anything mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. information that could be used to destroy you. Yes. yes. And then it becomes personal mm -hmm. because you're mm -hmm. like, well, what the heck is going on? Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. you, you were playing ball in a sewer. Right. 
and you want to know why you came out stinking. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you, you mm -hmm. don't play ball in a mm -hmm, sewer. Mm -hmm. Play with legitimate people. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what is the future of this earned? Um, and, and I still understand rationally why Congress allowed that to happen at the time. Because, again, it was about um, enhancing, okay? Enhancing. Yes. Well, I'm not sure about the earned income credit, but when the discussions come up and they talk about mortgage interest mm -hmm. and that kind of thing, um, I believe um, all of that is going to come into play. But that's a conversation that's uh, um, something for um, a long-term discussion, not something that they're going to do over the next seven days. So mm -hmm. oh, some no, of the things so. that they're going to debate right now, the HOPE credit, the HOPE now tell me about that, because that started off with high hopes. Mm -hmm. It was a, it's a wonderful. It's for, it's for college, first four years of college. Okay. Um, it replaced the well, actually, the hope is there. They, uh, when our president got his first term, he brought something in called the American Opportunity, and it okay. was a, a reformed hope. It became a four-year credit instead of a two-year credit. Okay. Um, and the American Opportunity piece allowed anyone who was eligible to get up to a thousand dollar refundable credit um, which was a wonderful thing um, some of the things that we saw were people who didn't work yeah people who were students yes. could file the credit and receive a thousand dollar refund so right now that is one of the they can still do this they can do this up until the end of this month oh my goodness until the decisions made okay. now it, if it doesn't if it does go away it will revert back to the two-year hope okay instead and of just, the four years yes and okay. it won't have the refundable piece okay uh, but there's always the, been the hope credit which was two years and there's still going to be the lifetime learning for people who are in school uh, credit which is not as lucrative but still it's an incentive mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. to educate right okay right. correct and yes yes because um, Students now are so heavily engulfed in student loans that it's just a I top. Hate As I was listening to uh, one of our more popular talk radio stations, and they were talking so badly um, about students that had went out and borrowed all this money to get a degree and and couldn't get a job. Oh no, it was a horrible conversation mm. on, on our a major, major, major national talk radio and calling them stupid. And uh, yeah, just I was on uh, Saturday morning, I'm driving and I'm listening to this and I said to myself, of the average student that goes into a um, financial aid office at a university, they don't understand. They're being pitched. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The school is trying to get you into their system. Right. And they're going to leverage whatever venues are available mm -hmm. to push you into their, their system. Mm -hmm. And students just found themselves uh, laden with debt mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then no job. Right. And right. no prospects of getting. Mm -hmm any mm -hmm. job yeah. so many of them mm -hmm. I, I mean how are you going to pay off a hundred thousand dollars yes it's very okay. difficult so um that but the hope is going is currently four years mm -hmm. it expires the end, end of, of this year of december mm -hmm. 2012 mm -hmm. and if it is not uh, extended it'll just revert back to two years yeah correct? first two years yes okay that's still mm -hmm. better than nothing i would that they would actually forgive student loans. I, I actually thought I that really, was going to be... I thought that was yes. going to be... I thought I heard that promise. Oh, like, didn't I, I thought hear that? I... Did I hear that? Yeah, I, I thought I, I thought heard, I heard that heard and it. then not another word. They, they, but I know the issue is with those student loans, that's interest, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that bankers are somewhere in the back. Yeah. I, I just believe that. And I think, too, they've come up with a few uh, programs where you can work. And yes, I, I you like can. that. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few places that you can insert yourself into rural and urban fields. Right. And then have some of your student loan paid off. Um, right. Not a lot of people go for that, but I, well, that's one way. It that, is productive. That is. And, mm -hmm. and I mean, I don't care how you cut it. When you've got interest accumulating, even at 2%. Mm -hmm. On a debt that's fifty or sixty thousand dollars. On the low end, yes. On the low mm -hmm, end. Mm -hmm, on the low mm -hmm, end. Mm -hmm. There is no future story 
Right. That, that, I mean, really. Right. There has right. to be intervention. And, mm -hmm. and the federal program, there was an article I wrote in the Cincinnati Herald about student loans. This summer, wasn't it? Yes, yes it was. I remember I, that. I yes. that. I wrote that article because I was so concerned about, and it hadn't become a political issue, but I saw it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. just like I saw the mortgage situation, but and I spoke to that about students uh, being willing to work mm -hmm. in uh, depressed areas mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and, and just work your debt off. Right, right. It's honorable. Mm -hmm. It is honorable. And you're honorable. still getting paid. Mm -hmm, it's not like mm -hmm. you are not being compensated, but it does allow a large core of people to move into public service, Peace Corps type stuff mm -hmm. in our cities to make a change. We're running out of time. Oh, you right. have some, yes, we only got like a few minutes. Can okay, you give well, some I wrap do. Up points? Well, I want to give people advice on some of the things that they can still do. Um, one of the only things right now, we have two weeks. Mm -hmm. If you itemize deductions, which means you're generally a homeowner or you're very generous um, charitable contribution, mm -hmm. I mean very generous, um, but a homeowner, uh, I would recommend people do some charity for the next two weeks give some things away, mm -hmm. um, try to increase your tax bill as much as you can. The uncertainty is not so much for this year, even though, like I said, there are some things that are gone. Teachers right now, there is gone. Mm -hmm. um, right now, as it stands, they cannot take that extra deduction for the money they spend. The tuition and fees are gone. Um, there's a few things that I think will come back, but there's some things that I won't. So right now, I would say Increase your money in your 401k if you can. Okay. Put the max in. Um, if you have an IRA, uh, now I'm not a financial advisor, but they're advising that everyone flip those to Roths. Well, that's and because And do that we now yeah, right. because the tax rate currently, 2012, will be lower than the consequences if you wait. Right. So that's a really good piece of advice. Right, I think it is. Um, and, and so those two things, you can maximize your uh, retirement and then also just give the maximum charitable contributions. I tell people to get your bags lined up and every day this week for the, don't wait till the last day because everyone does it. Uh -huh. um, see how many slips you can get and how many trips you can go to your Goodwill, your free store or whoever, wherever you go good. to. Yeah. I think that's good. I anyway, think that's good anyway. We have too much stuff. Yes, we do. I mean, you we know, we, we have a TV show called Hoarders, but mm -hmm. I tell folks, uh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. So you know those uh -huh. people are not going to be truly inclined to sell it like they should Yeah. because they haven't listened to the money lady. I know. But but if you're just going to sit it there, go ahead and take bags of it every day, and you get wonderful tax write-offs for that. So right now, awesome. I would see that, and you know, if there's income that you can receive this year, if you see yourself in a higher bracket, mm -hmm. if there's income that you can get now, get it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and then try to maximize your deductions if you're a business owner. Or you've got a couple of weeks. Make sure that you're getting everything that you deserve. That's one of the reasons why people pay taxes is because they they're unaware of what they could do. Would you give a phone number quickly because we're just about out of time? Okay, um, a phone number is area code five one three nine four eight one eight two nine. Say it again. Area code five one three nine four eight one eight two nine. That's Comprotex Cincinnati. And to all of my wonderful, wonderful viewers, this has been an amazing interview. I could talk to Robin Lewis a couple of more hours. I respect her so much as a, an accomplished uh, female entrepreneur who built her company successfully from scratch and hard work. I was with her from the beginning because she was just so smart. And I just like smart people and uh, it has served me well over the years. I would recommend highly that um, you consider her company. You can go into website, you can learn about Comprotax, they're a national company, um, and Sharp. Business owners, a must, just period. I've sent people to her, I will continue to send people to her because when it comes to money, you gotta have someone to handle the money, that's what I do. That's but you right. better talk to somebody who knows how to manage your tax position so that when the carnage is done, at least you're one of the few people that has been spared. And on that note, I'm going to close out today's segment of The Power of Money. I'm your host, Michelle Graves, and as always, you have an amazing day, an amazing week, and be richly blessed. You take care.